Okay, so we have a few rocks here. Um, this is a piece of the Gore Mountain Amphibolite. Took this from the Barton Mine on one of our field trips last year um, with our classes. This is a pretty famous rock from the Adirondacks, including having these large garnets that they mine. Um, this is, in fact, a New York State mineral. So we collected this rock. We do our initial investigations on it, but we want to really look closely. We want to really see, well, the microscopic relationships between the minerals. We then cut this rock and make a thin section. So we're going to do that today. Okay, this is one of our diamond bladed rock saws. We actually have a couple of these. This is the smaller one, our trim saw. This is the same kind of saw you would use to cut tile. Um, these are diamond embedded blades. They're not actually sharp to the touch. They really cut just by abrasion. But that allows us to cut through, um, cut through rocks relatively easily as long as we get it fairly slow. So, so these are water cooled. So we have to initially turn on the water. Then, I'm sorry, I can't see you over there. Oh, there you go. Uh, yep. Alright, we turn on the saw. So we have our Gore Mountain rock again, which we cut downstairs. What we ended up cutting that into is what we call a billet. This is the piece of rock that we would either send off or make a thin section out of ourselves. And the final version of this is actually a microscope thin section, which we can look at in a moment. But this is our petrographic microscope. We have these in our labs. In this case, we have a camera attached to the top, projecting to the screen. The petrographic, which really just means a microscope for looking at rocks. Um, the thin sections are thick and are thin enough to actually for light to shine through. So we have a bottom light and it's polarized light. We have a top light, which we can turn a polarizer on and off. And then we have multiple magnification possibilities. Um, there are other things we can do with this scope. There are different kinds of lenses, but those are the basics. Those are our simple kinds of our most simple kinds of uh, observations we can make. So now we're looking at a thin section of the Gore Mountain Rock looked at downstairs with the large garnets, some smaller garnets as well. Um, here you see we have minerals that are showing a little bit of color in thin section. Again, some that don't, but that stand out to your eye. They're very, um, they have what we call high relief. Um, would you rotate the stage, please? Of course. As you rotate the stage, you'll notice a little bit of color change. Not much. A little bit of color change in your brownish minerals. Um, not much else though. Can we go ahead and cross the polars? This is a good place to cross the polars right here. All right, if we cross the polars, we will see that that brown mineral is showing quite vibrant colors in cross polars. Our garnets go black, and as we rotate the stage, if you rotate it a bit more, please. If you rotate the stage, you'll notice a couple of the features. The garnets remain black. Um, a lot of our light colored minerals show these interesting patterns with these stripes on them as you cross the polars and rotate the stage. Um, that's our feldspar mineral. So what you're really looking at here, the garnets are here. The black colored and dark brown minerals here are your colored minerals like such. And then you have your light colored minerals are your white here, and those are your plagioclase feldspars, which are these. So we can identify all these minerals in hand sample and in thin section. Okay, so here we have a thin section view 
um, at relatively low magnification, about times 40 of the, sh of the schist that we looked at earlier downstairs. Um, you can see we have a lot of these clear minerals that are relatively, that don't really stand out visually that much. We also have some clearish minerals that very much do stand out to our eyes, such as this. And we have some other larger minerals here and here. Uh, will you go ahead and cross the polars, please? So here in cross polars, where we put the top polarizer in as well, we now see that all of these long minerals are showing bright colors. We call that interference colors. It's the result of their birefringence. We have this mineral, which is our garnet. And if you would rotate the stage, please, you will see that the garnet stays black the entire time of rotation. Our muscovite mica changes with rotation. And we also have these secondary minerals, which it turns out are tourmaline and starlight. Um, at least elsewhere in this rock. So this is a pretty classic medium-high grade Appalachian schist. 